Hi, I'm Chris Green, the History Chap, telling stories that bring British history to life. The HMS Birkenhead disaster occurred off the coast of South Africa in 1852. A British troop ship sank after hitting rocks and over 600 soldiers and sailors were cast into the shark-infested waters on a dark February night. Scores were attacked and killed by great white sharks. Just 193, a third, survived. HMS Birkenhead was transporting reinforcements to the 8th Frontier War, being fought by the British and the Corsas in the east of the Cape Colony, South Africa. When the ship foundered, the senior British Army officer ordered all the men to stand to attention and not to rush the one lifeboat containing the women and children as it was lowered over the side. In an incredible display of discipline and courage, they stood on the deck as the waters rose. Over 300 men were lost. However, all 27 women and children in that sole lifeboat survived, and it gave rise to a tradition in maritime disasters of women and children first, also known as the Birkenhead Drill. Launched in 1845, HMS Birkenhead was one of the first iron-hulled ships built for the Royal Navy. Originally envisaged as a frigate, the paddle steamer, which was constructed at John Laird's shipyard at Birkenhead, was instead converted into a troop transport ship. In January 1852, she departed Portsmouth under the command of Captain Salmond, transporting reinforcements to the 8th Corsa or Frontier War in South Africa. Eventually, there would be nine wars with the Corsas. The last one would be a successful British campaign led by General Frederick Thesiger, later known as Lord Chelmsford of Zulu war fame. Back to the Eighth War, which began in 1850. The British under Peninsula War veteran Sir Harry Smith had suffered initial setbacks, but by the time HMS Birkenhead was sailing south, the tide of the war had been reversed and the Corsas had fallen back on a guerrilla campaign, hence the need for more British troops. HMS Birkenhead was carrying 480 officers and men from various regiments, including the 12th Regiment of Foot, now part of the Royal Anglian Regiment, the 45th Regiment, later the Sherwood Foresters, and the 12th Lancers. There were also 51 men from the 2nd Regiment of Foot under Ensign Boyland and a sizeable contingent of the 74th Highland Regiment of Foot. The latter would become the Highland Light Infantry, with whom actor David de Niven would be commissioned in the 1930s, and I've told a story all about his military service, so check it out afterwards. Men from another Highland Regiment were also present, the 91st Regiment of Foot. The 91st would amalgamate with the 93rd Sutherlands to form the Argyle and Sutherland Highlanders. Captain Salmond reached South Africa and put into Simon's Town to refuel before embarking on the last leg of the journey. HMS Birkenhead left the naval base at 6pm on the 25th of February 1852, heading to Port Elizabeth, about 800 miles to the east. On board were 638 passengers and crew. As night fell, the ship steamed eastwards on a calm sea. And then at 2am on the 26th of February, she ploughed into a submerged shoal of rocks. It was at Danger Point, just past Hermanus, where tourists now go whale watching. With her 20-foot paddles powering her onto the rocks, her iron hull was ripped open as if by a can opener. The Royal Navy captain ordered the ship to turn astern, as she slid back off the rocks, water rushed in through the damaged hull. Swiftly, the forward compartments were flooded, and something like 100 men drowned in their hammocks. The rest of the passengers and crew were hurriedly making their way onto the deck, where the women and children were placed into a lifeboat. As their little boat pulled away from the wreck, two more lifeboats were manned. The first's rope snapped, dropping it into the sea at an angle and swamping it and its crew. The other couldn't be launched due to faulty winches, and that left just three lifeboats for the remaining 600 men. Captain Robert Salmond shouted, All those who can swim, jump overboard and make for the boat! However, the commander of the 74th Highland Regiment, Lieutenant Colonel Seaton, realised that if 600 men swam to the little lifeboat containing the women and children, they would capsize it. 37-year-old Seaton from Aberdeenshire had joined the army in 1832 and had served in Australia and India before transferring to the 74th. As the most senior army officer on the ship, he now took command of all the men, 
regardless of regiment. He ordered the men to line up as if on parade and told them to stand fast. As a survivor later recounted, almost everybody kept silent. Indeed, nothing was heard but the kicking of the horses and the orders, all given in a clear, firm voice. Captain Edward Wright of the 91st Argyllshire Highland Regiment recalled, The order and regularity that prevailed on board from the moment the ship struck till she totally disappeared far exceeded anything I had thought could be affected by the best discipline. Everyone did as he was directed and there was not a murmur or cry amongst them until the ship made her final plunge. All received their orders and carried them out as if they were embarking instead of going to the bottom. It took just over 10 minutes for HMS Birkenhead to sink beneath the cold, dark waters. Lieutenant John Francis Girardeau of the 43rd Light Infantry was taken down by the suction of the sinking vessel, but pulled himself to the surface. All around him were men floundering in the water. Many of the men, despite the Victorian paintings of the incident, were partially clothed, and in some cases almost not clothed at all. Such had been the suddenness of the disaster as they raced from their slumbers. The men now struck out for the distant shore, three miles away. In that cold water, many men succumbed to hypothermia. But for many others, there was a greater terror. To this day, this area of the South African coastline is the haunt of great white sharks, and now they struck. Lieutenant Girardeau recalled the horrifying scenes. Nearly all of those that took to the water without their clothes on were taken by sharks. Hundreds of them were all around us, and I saw men taken by them close to me. But as I was dressed, having on a flannel shirt and trousers, they preferred the others. He finally made it to the shore after five hours in the water. 19-year-old Cornet, Ralph Shelton Bond of the 12th Lancers, was another survivor. The rank of Cornet in the cavalry, rather like ensign in the infantry, was abolished in the Cardwell Army reforms in 1871, both were replaced by the rank of second lieutenant. Prior to the ship sinking, he'd rescued two children who'd been abandoned beneath the decks and brought them up to that solitary lifeboat before it was lowered. He then swam the three miles to shore using a Macintosh life preserver, or a life belt to you and I, which he'd bought prior to the trip. Now, that's an inspired purchase. Bond would go on to serve in the Crimean War and in the Indian Mutiny before rising to the rank of captain. He died in May 1916 and is buried in St. Patrick's Cathedral, Armagh, the last survivor of HMS Birkenhead. Later that morning, a rescue vessel, a schooner called the Lioness, arrived and found 40 men clinging to the mast that was still sticking out of the water. It also recovered the women and children in their lifeboat. Of the 638 souls on board HMS Birkenhead, just 193 survived. 50 men of the 74th Regiment, including Colonel Seaton, perished. A memorial to these men from this Scottish regiment was unveiled in St Giles Cathedral, Edinburgh, where you can still see it to this day. The discipline, courage and self-sacrifice of the soldiers on HMS Birkenhead caught the public imagination. Councillor's paintings captured the scenes of classic British stiff upper lip. Even Rudyard Kipling wrote a poem about the sinking. But it didn't just inspire patriotic Britons. King Frederick William of Prussia had the story read out to every regiment in his army as an example of bravery and devotion to duty. Down in South Africa, a lighthouse was erected at Danger Point, which is still in use today. Meanwhile, locals in that part of South Africa, to this day, refer to Great Whites as Tommy Sharks. And there is one other legacy from the HMS Birkenhead disaster that resonates down to this day. It established the custom during maritime disasters of evacuating women and children first. And that custom is known as the Birkenhead Drill. Well, thanks for joining me today and I hope you enjoyed that little known story from British history. Join my membership channel for exclusive live talks, early releases, as well as opportunities to choose my next topics. Click on the button below. Plenty more stories coming your way. But in the meantime, thanks for your support. Keep well, and I'll see you again very soon. <laughs>